Good afternoon, ladies. Very good. I think the gentlemen can do better. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, thank you. I think we are all alive this afternoon. How many of you were blessed so much with the message this morning? Please raise your right hand. Wow, amazing. If you can think of the very foundation of friendship, what makes friendship lasting and meaningful? Can you think of one right now? Okay. Follow us. Mom, your parents has taught you values. You may not realize then, but can you give me three things? Can you give us three things that your parents has insisted that you would value these things? What are these things that you would value? Here are some of the values that we inherited from our parents. Number one, Respect of the elders. Respect should be shown to everyone. As what our parents and teachers have been telling us, we should treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And then the number two is the family worship. A Christian home must be centered upon Christ. And if it is centered upon Christ, then we'll feel with worship and then that number three being hospitable we can be known for being kind and welcoming visitors which may also mean that you always have a full house of thanksgiving thank you young people the very reason why Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were magnetized towards each other. Can you tell me? It is because they have the same values. They have the same important principles. One of them is the value of taking care of this body temple. They are not, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not afraid to die just so they will not dishonor or they will not dishonor that those principles that their parents have taught them we discuss about friendship and God Jesus as a, as a true friend but you cannot appreciate a relationship with Jesus unless you know how to value friendship with somebody else and what makes that friendship between somebody else is the principles that both parties uphold. So what I tell to the students that I interview in my office when they come to apply to AUP is this. Be very careful with the friends you will choose. Why? Because one of them will be your wife, men, Ladies, one of them will, you, will be your husband. Yeah. You will come together because of same values. Okay. And God has taught us a lot of values. That makes our relationship with Him stronger because those values are very important to our being. This afternoon, this afternoon, we will be discussing about Esther and Mordecai. Wow. Get ready. It's packed with beautiful information. Fasten your seal belt, young people, because something good is going to happen this afternoon. Announcement. Please listen. Upon entering the church, you receive a small paper that asked about the week of prayer, 
and some decisions that you want to have. Fill up the paper and drop it as you exit in the boxes that our ushers have provided. As we prepare ourselves uh, for the message, the other parts of the program, let me mention one very important announcement. Tomorrow evening, when is this? Tomorrow evening, there will be a communion service. This is during Vespers. Please bring your special offerings. It will be given tomorrow evening. We invite now the congregation to focus on the message and remind them and be reminded that what we are doing is a worship to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to our week of prayer program this evening. May God bless you. In the transition of our theme song, in the part where we sing together the family of God and into God's family, the ladies will sing into God's family and the gentlemen will sing the family of God. For opening song, shall we sing our theme song? Into God's family we now recite Into God's family His love will abide Looking to Jesus our comfort and home Waiting and watching for Christ to return Led by His Spirit, we're heirs of God. Brothers and sisters through Jesus' blood, living united in truth and love, we're sharing the blessings from God.
Good, good afternoon, everyone. For our prayer thought this afternoon is to pray for blessings in order to bless others. Our prayers are not to be a selfish asking, merely for our own benefit. We are to ask that we may give. The principle of Christ's life must be the principle of our lives. It says in John 17, verse 19, For their sakes, he said, Speaking of his disciples, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified. Our mission to the world is not to serve or please ourselves. We are to glorify God by cooperating with him to save sinners. It says in Christ's object lesson, the capacity for receiving is preserved only by imparting. For our prayer focus, let us pray for our family, friends, and the needy and the persecuted Christians. For the sequence of our season of prayer, a song will be sung to tune our hearts to the atmosphere of prayer, and the congregation will be given three minutes to pray, after which a song will be sung again to indicate that our prayer is up and it will be concluded by Mam Sai Definio. I invite the congregation to please kneel down.
Father in heaven, yes, it's so sweet, Lord, to call you our Father, the King of all kings. Father, we thank thee and praise thee, Lord, for all the blessings of each messages that we've been receiving, dear Father, for the fellowship, dear Lord. We praise you, Father, that in our relationship on earth, we have you. Father, we also... Thank you, Lord, for our families and friends that indeed have been a channel of your great love for us. Father, I pray that you are also being blessed in this week of prayer, dear Father. And as we ask, dear Lord, for the cleansing of our hearts and minds, Lord, that if we are hard-hearted, dear Father, soften our hearts, dear Lord, that we can receive your message to your Father. Father, we ask, Lord, for all the lessons we've learned in learning, dear Father, if there are still relationships that are not yet reconciled, we ask, Lord, that you be, be the mediator. Father, we ask, dear Father, also, that may no one in our family will be left out in your soon return, not only in our family, Lord, but also in our friends, in every relationship that we have. Father, we would like also to pray for, not just for our family and friends, but for those who are in need of you outside that circle, dear Father, outside our walls, the people who need you, Lord, who are hungry, who are in need of you, not only in you, of you, dear Father, but if in needy, dear Lord, Father, help us to love, serve, and teach those who are within our reach, dear Father. And we would like to also pray, Father, for our fellow Christians who are standing for you, Lord, who are being persecuted right now all throughout the world, dear Father. May be physically, dear Lord, please protect them and guide them. Father, Persecution does not only happen physically, Father, not only throughout the world, but maybe within this family, within our family, or within our friends, we are being persecuted because we want to stand for you. Father, grant us the strength, Lord, because, Father, we want to stand for you because you have given your life for us at that cross. Father, May you bless our speaker, Lord, and may you put your words into his lips. And may you grant us the mind and put an empty piece of paper, dear Father, that you can write freely your words in our hearts and minds, dear Lord. Father, help us with open hearts to receive your message and only through your spirit. Please, Father, shower us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank thee once more for our sweet loving Jesus, that through him, Lord, we have a relationship. And we ask this, dear Father, in his mighty name, who gave himself for us to have a relationship and for him to reach the needy and for him to stand for those who are persecuted. In the mighty and loving and sweet holy name of our Jesus, we pray.
just what they want to see. The priceless truth that others will deny When others say I'm just a man Who like to dream his dream When others call a miracle a myth You'll listen for eternity in moments This rock of revelation will build a strong and mighty nation, and it shall stand the storms of time upon this rock. If in a simple carpenter you see the sun. This rock of revelation will build a strong and mighty nation, and it shall stand the storms of time upon this rock. Oh, build my church upon this rock. It was June 3 in 2012, about three and a half years ago, when my sister, my cousin, and myself, we were flying to the Philippines. 
Um, after all the shopping, all the plannings that we had done, filling out all the applications, we were finally making it to the Philippines now. It was actually the first time that I was leaving home. It was my first time to be away from my family, my parents, and it was my first time to be flying without my parents there to guide me. It was my first time to be hopping from airport to airport, not knowing what to do, and without my parents there to guide me where I should go. We had a transit in Bangkok Airport in Thailand. And if any of you have been there to Thailand, you know how big, big the airport in Thailand is. So when we landed there, we didn't know where to go. We didn't know where we had to go to get our next flight coming here to the Philippines. We were scared. You know, we were trying to listen to what the other people around us are talking, but most of them didn't even speak English. We didn't know whom to go to ask for directions. You know, there was a possibility that we could have been lost in Thailand. We could have been lost in the airport. We would have been lost tourists, just wandering around, not knowing where to go. But then something popped in, into our, heart, our heads and our minds. Something that, you know, God probably told us, there is something that could lead you. There is something up there that could guide you. And then we saw these signboards in the airport. Whoever has been to an airport, you know that there are signboards up there, right? Those signboards are up there to guide who doesn't know where to go. So we use those signboards to guide us to our next flight. We got here to the Philippines, and now I'm here in AUP. I've been here for the past three and a half years, and this afternoon I'm here to tell you that I made the right choice in choosing AUP to be the school to guide me, to guide me to be an heir of God's wisdom. And I'm happy that God is training me here to be a guide to help others to become an heir of God's kingdom. And today I'm telling you that I am here to be an heir of God's kingdom. Let's pray. Almighty King, this whole week we've been desiring to become an heir of your kingdom. Lord, yet, as we stay here in this earth, there are so many things that could pull us down, that could make us not meet the standards that you want us to be, the, the standard that an heir of the kingdom should have, Lord. So this afternoon, Lord, we beg and we plead, Lord, that you please pour your Holy Spirit on us. Rain your spirit on us, Lord. Touch our hearts. Change our hearts, O oh Lord, this afternoon, so that the message today will be seeds, seeds of grain, Lord, that will not only be heard, but will be lived. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. For the past three days, if you have noticed, we have, talking, we have been talking about different characters in, mentioned in the Bible. We have tried to, to find how these people mentioned in the Bible could influence us to, to show us how to become an heir of God's kingdom. Today, we're also gonna talk about, this afternoon, about a very special person also, an interesting character. So I will try to relate to you the story, and please try to imagine the story. Please try to imagine yourselves being there in that story. Many, many years ago, probably over 2,500 years ago, there was this king, a king named King Ahasuerus, he was a mighty king. He had so much wealth. He had so much riches. He had over 127 provinces under his name. His kingdom reigned from Ethiopia all the way up to India. That was a vast area of land that he was ruling over. He also had so many princes who were ruling over in those provinces. And one day, King Ahasuerus thought to himself, maybe Maybe I should show them what I have. Maybe I should show them how rich I am. So he gathered them all together. He wanted to have a feast. So when they were all feasting together, on the seventh day, he thought to himself, maybe they should know how my queen looks like. So he asked his queen, Queen Vashti, to come 
to show herself in front of all the princes and in front of the king, but the queen refused. If you know the story, what happened next was that the, the king got angry. The wise men got together and told the king that Queen Washi disobeyed your command. You're supposed to dethrone her. The king followed the, the wise men's advice, and Queen Washi was thrown away from the kingdom. Now there was no queen in the, in the kingdom, so a decree was sent to all the provinces asking every young woman, all the young women who looked beautiful, to come and uh, present themselves in front of the king. So this character that we'll be talking about today was among those young women. And I'm sure all of you might have guessed by now who we'll be talking about. Yes, and it's true. We'll be talking about Esther. Esther, mentioned in the Bible, says um, in Esther chapter 2, verses 7, you'll find that Esther was an orphan. Esther had no mom. She had no mother and father. The father and mother died when she was young. And the person who took care of her was her cousin, Mordecai. Mordecai, on the other hand, was a Jew. His father uh, and his fathers from uh, old were also captives that Nebuchadnezzar took and came, brought to Babylon. And now we're living in the Medo-Persian uh, era the empire of the, the Persian Empire. And now Mordecai was a Jew, a Jew who believed in God, the true living God, who feared God, who served the Lord. And when Mordecai was taking care of bringing up Esther, Mordecai made sure that he taught all these good values, his beliefs about this true living God, that Esther will grow up, will be trained to be serving the Lord someday. So time passed by, the Bible goes on to tell us that Esther was a very, very, very beautiful lady. She grew up to become a lovely, a very beautiful long, young woman. Now, I, I tried imagining myself how beautiful she, she, she could have been. I was trying to picture someone with dark, long hair, with sparkling eyes, with, you know, her smile could have been so, so, infectious, it could have been so contagious. You know, whenever she walked to the marketplace and tried to smile at people, they couldn't resist but to smile back, right? She was that pretty, she was that beautiful. The Bible actually describes her to be a, a lovely young woman. So when this decree that King Ahasuerus passed on to all the provinces, asking young women to be brought to the kingdom, to the palace, Esther was among them. Esther was brought to the palace. And now Esther was being trained under a eunuch for 12 months. And the, the eunuch, or Esther, found favor in the sight of the eunuch. And Esther was one of the, the, the women that the eunuch loved the most. And time passed by after 12 months of training. Uh, she was brought in front of the king. And Esther found favor inside, in front of the king. In the sight of the king, Esther found favor. I was trying to imagine myself, you know, the king would have gone through so many young women. He would have seen so many other beautiful women. But what was special in Esther? What made the king with no doubt decide that she was going to be the next queen? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll study more. We'll, we'll, we'll find out what made her special, what made her be chosen as queen as, as, as soon as the king saw Esther. He knew that she was going to be the, the queen. We'll find out. Time passed by. There were so many things happening in the kingdom. You know, when you're the queen and when you're the king, you have to take care of so many things. There's so many wars probably that you have to fight, so many other things that you have to balance and make sure that, you know, the whole kingdom is prosperous, everyone has food. You have so much to rule and think about. So time passed by, so many things happened, and there was this one character that pops up now, Haman. Haman was an ordinary person, but then he was given the chance and he was promoted to, to become second to the king. Now, when he was given that promotion, he, used, he took advantage of it and he made the king 
or sent a decree around saying everyone should worship him or bow down to him whenever he passes in the marketplace. So when time passed and when he used to walk around the marketplace, everyone else bowed down and worshipped him except for one person. Except for one person, and that was Mordecai. I told you Mordecai was a Jew. He served the living God. He knew who he was and he knew who he had to worship. He didn't have to worship Haman. He knew he only had to worship God and he stood for what is right. He stood that day when Haman found out that he was not worshiping him. This, this, this caused Haman to become really angry. He went to the king, he complained to the king and told, you know, there is this particular group of people in your kingdom who doesn't even respect your decree. Your decree said to worship Haman, but there is this one group of people who doesn't respect it anymore. And then, he was angry at Mordecai, but when he found out that he was a Jew, Haman wanted to destroy all the Jews in the land. Remember, Esther was a Jew, but Esther had not revealed herself as a Jew to the king up till now because Mordecai told her not to. And now Mordecai, Mordecai was concerned. If this, this, the, the decree was passed to kill all the Jews, and Esther was a Jew, and even though she's up there as the queen, Esther is not gonna be spared. Mordecai was now panicking, he was scared. But what he did was, he told Esther, he, called, he, he sent a messenger to Esther and told Esther, Esther, please go to the king and plead him that he will spare us, he will save the Jews. Esther, st Esther told Mordecai, Mordecai, you know what? No one has the right to go to see the king unless the king would call them to come to see him. Esther told, him to, Esther told Mordecai that if she just entered the king's palace to see the king, he has the right to even kill her because he did not call her to, to come there. But then Mordecai told Esther, Esther, I'm not sure why you're here at the palace today. I'm not sure why God let you be there. But then I know for sure that for such a time as this is why you are there. For God must have had a plan for you from the day I brought you up to be here this day in the palace, to, to be able to plead in front of the king to save your people. I was reading a quotation from the book Royalty and Ruin by Mrs. Ellen G. White. And in page 212 it said, Satan was using Haman. Satan was using Haman to destroy every believer of the li true living God. But then God is more powerful, my friend. God had you know, planned all this even before Satan could use Haman. God had planted Esther inside the palace. So now Esther, uh, she, she went in front of the king and, the, and she found favor inside of the king, which is a surprise. You know, she was scared to go there because she thought the king would kill her. She, he had the right to kill her. But then the king found favor in the sight. Uh, Esther found favor in the sight of the king. And the king rec uh, asked Esther, like, you know, what, what could I do for you? What could I do for you? Why are you here today? And then Esther invites them uh, together with Haman and the king to have a feast. The story goes, goes on telling that after the feast, uh, Esther opened up herself and told the king what Haman was trying to do. She revealed herself there as a Jew. And he, she explained to the king how Haman was trying to kill all of her people. And that made the king angry and then Instead of destroying all the Jews, the person who was destroyed at the end was Haman. The story of Esther doesn't end there, but we are gonna try to focus ourselves on the story that we just heard of Esther. How, how Esther was brought up by Mordecai to be, you know, to be trained, or Esther was trained to be someone who, ser who would serve the Lord, someone who would follow the calling of the Lord. 
and how Mordecai was, you know, the guide that God used to bring up, or to bring, yeah, to bring up Esther to what she was when she became the queen. Let's try to find out Esther. Let's try to see who she is. Okay, Esther. The name Esther is actually the Persian name given to her. Hadassah was her uh, Jewish name. But Esther means star. Esther was a star. Esther was someone, this star was someone who was reflecting the light of a greater light. She was the star reflecting God's light. We'll try to see what the letters, what each letter would try to teach us today. S stands for seeker of godly example or an exemplar. Esther, like I said, was brought up by Mordecai. Mordecai brought, up, brought her up in a way that she would be led to God. She was brought up in all the beliefs and principles that you know, the Jewish followed the, those days. But when she became the queen, Esther had the chance, she, she had the choice to, to follow someone else. She had the eunuch in, in the palace. She had the king himself there. There were so many other people that Esther could have followed. Who, uh, Esther could have looked up to some other person when she was in the palace, when, probably when she was growing up, she had so many other friends that she was with. She could have followed or been influenced with someone else. But Esther, she always sought for a godly example. Today, God is giving us or calling us to make a choice too. God is asking us, who are you influenced by the most? Who are you seeking here in AUP today? Are you trying to be, or are you trying to seek to a friend? Are you, or are you trying to seek a friend who is of the world? Or are you trying to seek someone who is leading an example, a godly example? God is trying to ask you, or I'm, I'm asking you this afternoon, friends, are you seeking for a godly example? Esther did. And that's what made, that's one thing that made her different. And that's probably one thing that, you know, made her different amongst all the young women who were brought, front, brought in front of the king. She sought, she sought, or she was a seeker of a godly example. Next, we have the letter T, taken into custody. Esther had no mother, no father. They both died, I told you, when she was young. But then Esther was adopted by Mordecai. Mordecai was a person who was connected to God, and now he has taken into custody someone called Esther. And now he's, try he's bringing her up, trying his best to connect him or her to God. Taken into custody, um, if Esther did not submit herself to be adopted, Mordecai wouldn't have been able to help her be connected to God, to the God that Mordecai was connected. To be taken into custody doesn't mean to be literally being adopted to a different family. But being here in AUP, I'm telling you, you know, you can't commit yourself, you can't submit yourself to be admitted or to be adopted to be, to be able to submit yourself to what is being taught here in AUP. We have our morning worships, our evening worships. We have our midweek services here in, AU, in PIC, our week of prayer services, our Vesper services, our Sabbath services. All of these things are, are, are ways that you can commit yourself to be adopted into to what God wants to bring you or what God wants you to uh, grow into. The letter A, alone, a nobody with nobody. Esther was an orphan. She was alone. She was a nobody. 
and she had nobody when she was growing up at first. When I first came here to AUP, I felt like Esther. I had maybe four friends when I came here to AUP. I was lost. I was all alone. But then, God showed me people. He led me, he guided me to meet people. And today, I have a lot of friends here in AUP. I've found friends who've, who've been able to influence me to meet a savior, a, a God who's loving. And when I first came here to AUP, uh, actually on my way to AUP from the airport, my cousin was, was telling us all about uh, the small groups here in AUP and how she you know, grew together with the people in the small group. And particularly, my, the small group that I'm part of is student missionaries. And how, how you know, the outreach programs they had was so much of an influence to her that she grew up together. When I came to AUP, I felt alone. But whenever I had the chance to visit my small groups, whenever I had that chance here in AUP to go there, you know, I felt I had family here. You know, God provides. God, God doesn't just let you alone. It, it, today, there might be someone sitting here who might be feeling alone. A freshman who's here who might be feeling alone. Here in AUP, you might feel like you're a nobody. But no, God can still use you. He's going to show you that there is somebody who can lead you, who can guide you. The letter R, reassured of the presence and safekeeping of somebody. Esther was alone. She was an orphan, but God did not just leave her there. She, he, God made sure that Esther had someone to look up to. God reassured, of, reassured her of the presence of a somebody in her life. God let Mordecai guide her. God used Mordecai to guide her to the, to the way he, you know, God wanted to someday use Esther. Like I said earlier, you know, the small group that I joined were the ones that you know, molded me to become who I am today. Today, I'm telling you, my friends, don't, don't feel like you're alone. There's so many of us around here, and there are so many small groups waiting for you. You could always join them and feel at home. God says in Roman, Romans 8, 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is with us, who can be against us? When, when, Esther was a, when Esther was feeling alone, when Esther was a nobody, when she felt like she was with nobody, God reassured to her and is telling us today that if God is with us, who can be against us? In Matthew 28, 20, God says, you're not going to be alone. You're not alone anymore. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Esther felt alone. I felt alone when I was here in AUP at first. But God is telling us this afternoon that I, we are never alone. He is always going to be there, and He is always there. One special character that, you know, the, the special character that molded more, uh, Esther is this person named Mordecai. Mordecai, like I said, was the guide that God used to, to lead Esther, to grow, to let Esther grow into what she became. Here in AUP, we have our staff, our faculty, our administrators, and our mentors, our dormitory deans, whoever, can be, whoever we can call as staff. You know, the, the word staff could mean many things, right? You have this staff that could be a rod, and the rod, the staff, depends, the, the, the use of the rod depends on the person 
who's using it, right? Mordecai allowed himself to be used by God. He was a staff that the Lord used, that the Lord used, and he depended his life on God so that God can use him in a mighty way. Let's try to take a look at what these different words or the different letters of the word staff means. S, we have the word service-oriented and committed. Mordecai, actually he, he was a gatekeeper at the citadel of the Persian Empire. He was committed to his service. He was there every morning, making sure that you know, the gate was, was well, it was closed. And also, when he was taking care of Esther, Every morning, he made sure that he was there in front of the women's quarters to make sure that Esther was doing fine. That's how service-oriented, committed Mordecai was. Today, here in AUP, we have our faculty and our staff who are also service-oriented, who are committed. Now, have you ever walked into a class when a teacher is not prepared to teach to you? No, they're always prepared. And I'm so grateful to all my teachers here in AUP this, uh, this afternoon. I should tell you that, you know, I'm thankful for all of you for being service-oriented and very committed to what you, you know, to what you have assigned yourselves to be. Mordecai was one of those. Mordecai was also true to his duty. Mordecai was an exemplar. Mordecai was the example that Esther looked up to. Mordecai was connected to God. By that, he was able to bring up Esther to be able to be connected to God. When you say an exemplar, you are supposed to be someone that others can look up to. And Mordecai fulfilled this you know, with his actions and with the way he brought up Esther, he showed that he was an exemplar. Today, as students here in AUP, we are to find an exemplar. We are to find our exemplars, an exemplar who's connected to God, an exemplar who can guide us, who can lead us to be connected to that same God. a father figure, someone who provides, someone who protects, and who is a priest. Mordecai adopted or took Esther to be as his own daughter. He was the father figure for Esther. He provided, he protected, and he was a priest to Esther. Mordecai was the one who guided, and today, I'm also talking to the faculty and staff who are here, here. You are called to be a guide to us students here. You are being reflected by the life of Mordecai. Today, the life of Mordecai is reminding all of us that if ever we are to be a guide, a guide who is supposed to be an exemplar, we are to be a father figure, someone who provides not just physical needs, our spiritual needs, our mental needs, everything, our emotional needs, someone who protects, someone who protects us, someone who is there for us, and someone who will be the priest to lead us to that same God that we serve. The other F stands for a fair player who gave his best. Mordecai, when he was serving the king, he did not neglect his duties as the guardian of Esther. He made sure that Esther was safe and Esther was doing the right thing. Today, God is telling us through the life of Mordecai that we are to give our best, to give our best whenever we are trying to lead others. When we are trying to make or guide others to become an heir 
of God's kingdom, we cannot just be, you know, we are supposed to be fair. God is reminding us that we are supposed to be fair, a fair player giving our best when we are trying to guide others to become an heir of God's kingdom. If we are to guide others, we are supposed to be service-oriented. We are to be committed to what we serve. We are to be true to our duty, to become a guide, to become a guide who will bring others to be an heir of God's kingdom. You have to be true to your duty. God is telling us you have to be an exemplar. He is reminding us that we are to be a father figure who provides, who protects, and who is a priest. He's saying that we are to be a fair player who gives our, the best that we have. This whole week, we have been talking about being an heir. From the first day since Monday, when the speaker up here was talking to you about an heir, about being an heir, who among you was excited? I would like to see hands. Who among you was excited when they said that you can become an heir of God's kingdom? Amen. I'm glad to see hands up there. You know, isn't that good news? Isn't it good news that God is telling us we can become an heir of his kingdom? Who is an heir? Who is an heir? This morning it was clearly explained to us. You know, an heir is someone who, who has the right to inherit. And God is telling us that we can become an heir of his kingdom. He's saying, he's giving us such good news that we can become an heir of his kingdom. But how can we become an heir of his kingdom? We learned about Esther. You know, she, she sought for an godly example. She, she was, you know, being guided by Mordecai. She chose to be, uh, she, she let herself be taken into custody, right? She was following an example, Mordecai, and then she was reassured by God, even though, that, even though she was alone, even though she was a nobody, that God will always be there. And then God provided to her, a Mordecai, a staff. You know, some, someone who is service-oriented, someone who's committed, true to his duty, someone who is an exemplar, and this afternoon, God is reminding us that for us to become an heir, we are supposed to do three things. A star. Esther was a star. She was reflecting the light of the greater light. She used the light of Mordecai. She used the example of Mordecai to be reflected in her life. She was that small star reflecting the light of that greater star. Mordecai was connected to God. Mordecai was connecting Esther to God. And then Esther was able to reflect the light of God. The staff, like I told you, depends on the hand that uses it. God is using our staff and faculty here this afternoon. And he is saying that he's going to let them be the examples that we as students are to follow, to be able to reflect that greater light of God. God is telling us that we have a choice this afternoon. When I told you the story about us being lost in the airport, I told you that we had a choice, or we chose to look up to those guide, those signboards to be a guide that would lead us. Today, God is telling you, if you are to be an heir of God's kingdom, choose. Joshua once said in, his, in Joshua, you find the verse saying, as for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord. He chose that day for him and his household to be serving the Lord. God is telling you, my friends, this afternoon to make a choice. He's saying that you have the freedom of choice to choose. You are to choose an exemplar to follow. You are a star. Choose an exemplar who has the reflection of that greater light so that you can reflect that same great light in your lives. God is telling you, you to choose. He's asking you to choose wisely. So here, living here in AUP, he's asking you this afternoon to make a choice to choose amongst our faculty and staff wisely to find out who is connected to that God, to that great light, and follow them. Remain. God is asking you to remain. It was easy to say, it's, it's, it's easy to say to remain. You know, Esther, she chose to follow Mordecai, but probably when she was in the palace, she could have been influenced by so many other people, but she chose to remain. She remained faithful to the same God that Mordecai taught her when she was small. God is telling us this afternoon, if you are to be an heir of God's kingdom, remain. Do not sway to the left or to the right. Remain straight. Remain. You should be able to stand up for what is right. You should be able to stand up for what you have been taught, for what you have chosen to be what's right. And the last is to be. God is calling you to be an heir this afternoon. God is calling you to be an heir of his kingdom. Esther, she chose to follow the right mentor. She chose to remain faithful, and she became an heir of God's kingdom. God is calling us this afternoon to choose to remain and to be. The word B has only two letters. It's very simple. Just the letter B and E. But it's very powerful. To become an heir, God is asking us this afternoon to choose to remain and to become an heir of God's kingdom. I would like to tell you a small story. Once there was this queen who invited many orphans to come to her palace to have dinner with her. Just try to imagine, just try to imagine if God is calling you this afternoon to come to his palace, to come to his kingdom, to have dinner with you, what would your reaction be? Wouldn't you try to look for your best clothes? Say you're going on a date with someone that you're, you know, you're in love with. Wouldn't you want to please that person wear the best clothes that you have, you'll be very excited. The same way these orphans that the, the queen invited were very excited when they got to the palace. They were very, very excited to see so many things around. They saw, they saw these huge bushes, you know, trimmed, very perfect. They saw so many, probably they saw clowns walking around. They were so much into, you know, the things around this palace they were overwhelmed by what the palace had. You know, they were so excited, running up and down, shouting, trying to share, like, you know, laughing around, telling the other person, hey, look at this clown. This one is more funny. But amongst these children, one boy, one orphan boy stood out. This orphan boy, Andy, he was different. He stood out there, he was observing everything that was happening around. He felt very thankful to be there in the kingdom or in the palace that the queen had invited. This boy, while he was observing what was happening around, he didn't know where he was supposed to go. He didn't want to just go run out, up and down and be lost. One thing that was always ringing in his ear that afternoon was what his mother told him. Son, my son, if ever you feel lost, 
just follow the queen and you will be safe. Just follow the queen and for sure you will be safe. They all gathered to have dinner and this boy Andy, he, he found a seat onto the right side of the queen. He sat there where he could have a clear picture, a clear view of the queen. Oh, imagine us as those orphans. We are here in this world running up and down, chasing our dreams, chasing things that are not you know, to be chased for, chasing things that are not even worth it. We are being distracted by so many things in this world. We forget to be thankful for God who has invited us to have dinner with Him. We, are, we forget of all the good things that God has done for us because we are being distracted of these unnecessary things. But then this boy, he chose to sit on the right side of the queen just so that he can have a clear picture, a clear view of the queen because his mother told him that if you are lost, just follow the queen and you will surely be safe. Aren't we supposed to be like that boy, looking at God clearly to see what he's doing and then reflect that in our lives? Isn't that what an heir is supposed to do? When the dinner was done, the queen rose, stood up, and she announced and said, to all, everyone's surprise, she said, today, I'm gonna choose someone amongst the orphans to be an heir of my throne. God is giving us the same invitation this afternoon. He's saying that you have the chance to be chosen. You have the choice to be chosen as one of God's heirs to his kingdom. The queen walked up to this boy, Andy, and she told the boy, my son, you have been chosen to be the heir of my kingdom. How I wish I was that boy. How I wish God could look at me right now and tell me, my son, you are an heir of my kingdom. Did you ever think that God could tell that to you? How I wish I was the one that God is telling right now that I am an heir of God's kingdom. Did you ever wish for it? Side by side. 
light, joyful singing without end. Heavenly angels will attend. Let us love one another, every brother and sister. Come and be a part of his family, the family of God. Living for Jesus, abiding in his word, soon in heaven we'll be in the family by side, joyful singing without end, heavenly angels will attend, let us love one another, every brother and sister, come and be a part of his family, the family of God. afternoon, God is telling you to be a fam part of this family of God. In Esther, family, she family. had the choice. She had the chance to make the choice to be an heir of God's kingdom. She made the right choice to follow the right person and to be an heir of God's kingdom. She remained to be an heir of God's kingdom and she became an heir of God's kingdom. This afternoon, God is calling each one of us to make a choice. And I would like all of you to make a choice right now, today, right now. Tomorrow might be too late, my friends. We don't know what will happen when we leave the doors of PIC this afternoon, this evening. But so God is asking you to make a choice right now. God is asking you to make the choice to choose the right person to, to, to look up to, to use as a guide to become an heir of God's kingdom. God is asking you this afternoon to remain as an heir of God's kingdom. And God is asking you to become an heir of God's kingdom. If and only if you feel that you can make that right choice, the choice to become an heir of God's kingdom, I would like you all to stand up with me. But if and only if you can make that choice this afternoon. If you feel that you can remain and if you want to become an heir of God's kingdom. My friends, I don't want to be standing up here alone in the stage. I want everyone, every student here, every faculty and staff who have been so good and such a guide to all of us here this afternoon. If you want to make that choice to remain and to be an heir of God's kingdom, please join with me here in, up here in stage. Walk, don't be scared, don't be shy. Please walk up to the stage if you feel that you can be an heir of God's kingdom. If you want to commit yourself to God this afternoon and say, God, I choose to become an heir of God's kingdom. Lord, I want to remain an heir of God's kingdom. Lord, please guide me. Please help me to choose the right person to, to use as my guide. Lord, please help me to remain, remain in the faith that I have been brought up, to remain as an heir of God's kingdom. Don't just stand down there, my friends. Please join me up in stage. If God is calling you, join me up in stage this afternoon. I would like to offer a prayer for you. If God is still moving you, if the Spirit is talking to you, if you want to be an heir of God's kingdom this afternoon, please join us. Let's pray. Lord, as some of your children, heirs of your kingdom, are still walking to the front, Lord. I pray that you bless us, Lord, as we have made this right choice this afternoon. 
the choice to become an heir of your kingdom. We want to thank you, Lord, for the promise that you've given us that you will always be there for us. No matter how many times we would feel alone, no matter how many times we would feel like we are nobody or we are with nobody, you are always there. Lord, we want to thank you for the reassurance that you've given us, Lord, and for this opportunity that you've blessed us to choose to become an heir. And Lord, now we pray that as we remain heirs, that you will grant us that wisdom, that understanding the strength to hold on, to remain as heirs of God's kingdom. Lord, I pray that you enable us to become an heir of God's kingdom soon. Lord, for those who have not been able to make the choice right now, I pray, Lord, that you continue to speak to their hearts and minds, continue to touch their lives, Lord. Show them that they are also capable. They also could be an heir of your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you please touch their hearts. Help them, guide them as they make their choice. Lord, I pray that you bless us as we leave this place of worship this evening, that we will not forget to commit ourselves before we leave, that we will not forget to tell you how much we love you and how much it is for us to be remaining as an heir of your kingdom, Lord. I pray that you please, please help us not to forget that. Help us to have a wonderful time, Lord, together with you as we learn more about how to become an heir in the coming few days. Help us not to forget what we have studied today of how to become an heir, to choose to become an heir, to remain to be an heir, and to become an heir someday. Lord, we want to praise and thank you for all that you've done for us and for humbly accepting our earnest prayer and for always hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' holy and worthy name I pray. Amen. Even in Jesus we abide And we worship side by side Joyful singing without end Heavenly angels will attend let us love one another, every brother and sister. Come and be a part of his family, the family of God. In the family, the family of God.